Good evening, my name is John Paul Perez. I'm a sophomore, and after high school, I would like to join the Navy. Good evening, my name is Joshua Vicenio. I am an 11th grader, and my plan after high school is, is to join the Navy. Good evening, my name is Jennifer Paxter. I am an 11th grade, and my plans after high school is that I want to be a fighter pilot. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda are the district recognition of the road. We have the pleasure this evening to recognize both our 2021 Young Georgia author winners. So it's great to see students back at the board meeting with us for the first time in over a year. Uh, but also then the district spelling bee winner. I'd like to bring up Dr. Lee Sears, our director of elementary schools, to uh, announce the winners for the district. And students, as you're calling, if you'll come up, give us a little fist bump, we'll get a big group picture. <laughs> All right, the system level winners for Young Georgia Author Writing Competition 20, uh, 20, 2021. If you'll come forward when I call your name. For kindergarten, our winner was from Anoda. Emory Massey, if you'll come forward. Emory's paper with Tyrington's hat hole. Our first grade winner was from Gainesville Exploration, Chelsea Valle. And the title of her paper was The Best Day. <laughs> Our second grade winner from Bear Street is Andrea Nara Salazar, if you'll come forward. And for the title, My Exciting Year. It was an exciting 
exciting year for all of us. The third grade winner from Fair Street, Malena Trower. Our fourth grade winner was from Monday Mill. The winner was Cortana Vasquez. And our fifth grade winner, Gainesville Exploration, Elvin Moran. Karen, if you'd like to come forward and get a better picture, feel free to do that as well. At this time, we would like to recognize Andrew Mahdi. Is he with us tonight? Andrew, come on up. Andrew is our district spelling bee winner. He also represented us very well at regionals. Andrew has been a GCSS student since kindergarten at Anoka, and he is now in a grade at GMS. In his spare time, he plays tennis. Swim, loves to read, and also plays guitar. He's not sure how you guys are good at spelling, but he's always loved to read. That's the key, Andrew, and enjoyed being competitive. Congratulations. Anytime we get a chance to celebrate our students and their accomplishments, it's always great. Thanks. Thank y'all for joining us. I think maybe the first time in quite some time, at least a year, that we had 100% student participation. Right? So, uh, also at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Christopher, our principal of Lundy Mill, to give us a little bit of recognition on her side, both with the teacher of the year and the retiree from Lundy Mill from last year. Good evening, Amber. Come on up. I'd like to introduce to you Amber Sharkey, but she got married, so we're trying to adjust to her new last name, which is Miss Halsey. So, Miss Halsey, come on up. She's our grade level chairperson. She serves on our leadership team. She serves as a mentor to a new teacher and also works with our interns from UNG. And she's an exceptional teacher. Um, she makes learning fun and meaningful. And I think during remote learning, you even introduced your dog, Cotton, to up to the students. So Cotton is part of the family as well. She always has a smile on her face and is very well respected within the school community. Her um, colleagues have this to say of her. Amber is always going above and beyond to help her students. Amber happily mentors any teacher who needs help and has been there for me many times. 
Amber, well, she went out of her way to make sure her students had the best last few days together before the break. She's a great listener and will try new things if it means her students will learn and have fun at the same time. So Amber, congratulations again for being our teacher of the year. And now Tammy Lashley, if you'll come forward. Tammy is the first person from Mundyville to retire. <laughs> she is enjoying time with her grandchildren, spending time with her parents. And I think her, her, two, her two dogs are enjoying spending time with her as well. <laughs> so I hope you are enjoying retirement and you are. Next on the agenda is the board uh, of nominations. Since uh, a few moments to share a few uh, words about our party friend, Daryl White. Uh, Carol has with us more than 15 years has been leadership in our system at Gainesville High School, at Woodsville Academy, at Gainesville Exploration, and lastly, he was the first assistant principal at Mundyville, and he passed away earlier this year. We have fond memories of Daryl, who had a uh, mischievous smile. <laughs> One white never knew what he was thinking while smiling, but he did all of that. To the uh, Monday Mill staff and faculty, thank you uh, for picking up the, where you needed to pick up during Harold's illness and absence. Thank you for that. It's no uh, I want to tell you a funny story about Harold if I can. When he was at Monday Mill, which, uh, excuse me, when he was at Woodsville, which was our alternative school, short lived, Daryl set out this democratic process to name a mascot for Woods Mill. So he did a poll, came up with some nominations, held an election, and the students voted to be the conquistadors. Their privilege, their election. So the next week, Daryl White comes to the school board and announces that their mascot is the bus signs. So after the meeting, he said, uh, Daryl, what happened to the conquistadors? He just smiled. <laughs> Just smiled. There's a story, sidebar story, but he just smiled. He did what he was supposed to do. Several of us were able to go to his uh, memorial service, and this stuff with me, one of his preachers mentioned that both of Daryl's sons were involved with Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts at their uh, church. And the preacher told us that Daryl would not bring those boys and drop them off for scouting activity. He brought them, but stayed with them. So he too learned what they learned. It's a nice lesson for all of us that I will learn from his uh, memorial. Stand please for a moment of uh, silence in memory of our friend here.
Thank you.
Um, before I go into the area relating to the memorial for Daryl White, do you have any questions for me? Um, I'm just curious, is that about an average ratio for elementary trees for in person and virtual? It's not too far off. You got to remember, we started doing about 15% in virtual and dropped down to about seven. I think it's around five or so now, five percent. Five. Okay. okay. And moving on to um, talk about Mr. White. We've done some, some good things, I think, to honor his memory. One of the things that we did was um, actually, I'd like to ask at this point if Mayor Scarlett, if you wouldn't mind standing up and Courtney, you can come too, because Courtney is one of our first, actually, our only model teacher. Courtney is the granddaughter of Mayor Scarlett. You can come on up. You'll see a picture of the bench. Thank you for putting that up there. Mayor Scrubs is the one who built it. Isn't it beautiful? Um, our school, we, and you can just kind of come stand over here with me. When we voted to do certain things, we knew we wanted to do a bench. We wanted to have an outdoor environment because the outdoors was so important, Daryl. Um, and that's when Courtney came to me and she says, my granddad, he, he can build benches. I'm like, wow. And then said that he would make one for us. So of course, yes, absolutely. And as you can see, it is, it's wonderful. It's beautiful. It was delivered and it is already being used. So I publicly wanted to say thank you and shake your hand for doing that. You're thank right. you so much. And thank you for letting me know. <laughs> and I want to tell you that it all came out of one trip. One real trip. Thank you so much again. I appreciate your time. Another thing we did is we noticed that there were so many positive comments about Merrill on social media. We figured we could capture those and put them in a book for his family. So that's exactly what we did. We copied and pasted every single comment, and we made six copies of a hardbound book of all the comments that were made about Merrill. We gave them to uh, one to each of his two sons, one to his nephew, who was like a son, um, and one to each of his two sisters, and then we have a copy in our media system. Another thing that we have done is this, it indirectly deals with Daryl, but we are creating a timeline of events at our school. So we'll have, we have pictures of the ribbon cutting ceremony and different important events and people throughout the history of Monday Mill. And of course, Daryl's picture will be placed up there on that timeline as being the first assistant principal of Monday Mill. And finally, uh, if you were to go to Daryl's office outside in the hallway, there were a list of character traits. Character was a, a big thing to Daryl. Whenever he had a conversation with any of our youngsters, he would always refer to the different character traits and how important it was to have good character in life. So we have established the Daryl E. White Outstanding Student Award. Outstanding is his word, his word by the way. Everything was that's outstanding. So we figured it was very fitting. Um, this award will be given to one fifth grade student annually. There is a nomination process. Everyone who works with the fifth graders has a voice in this and will help determine who the recipient will be. The recipient will receive a plaque. And in addition to that, we will have a plaque that remains at the school with the nameplates on it, and we'll have that in our display case. So we feel these are um, very memorable ways to honor Daryl. Do you have any questions for me? Thank you, Dr. Brown. Thank you. Okay. All right, we have a motion on the approval of the minutes. So we have a motion by Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Mitchell. All those in favor? Mr. Curious. Dr. Williams, you want to take item number eight? Uh, yes, each year we submit to the Georgia School Board Association board recognition status. I am Two years prior to last year, we were uh, uh, and now we're setting up to distinguish last year. This will be two consecutive years of a distinguished board recognition to remain the city board of education. Our goal would be that after this 2021 year, we would then step up to exemplary <laughs> and the highest recognition uh, from the submission standpoint. Any questions on that? Yes. Do I have a question about it? Uh, Mr. Smith, second by Dr. Randy. Any other questions? All those in favor? 
Right, the next item on the agenda is items of information about apartments by Dr. Williams. Turn it back over to you. I'll go ahead and let you read these. Two of them will be uh, fairly quick. One will take a little bit of time. The first will be in the 2021 end of year activities. I just really want to commend the principals for getting this information to the set so that we can put it in a format uh, for you to see what's going on across our schools. We've had conversations in our principal meetings and cabinet meetings about how do we kind of restore some level of um, normalcy to the end of the year. You'll see a lot of different programs being done virtually, but from a good great standpoint, some others uh, haven't been able to uh, successfully meet in person. You'll notice the high school and Mr. Green will be giving us an update at the work session in May regarding the graduation plan, but you can see the various festivities and activities leading up to the end of the school year. We are, I believe, after the day, 22 days remaining uh, in the school year. Got here fast, and these, these last four and a half weeks will go by fairly quickly as well. So just want to bring that to your attention, uh, the end of year activities that's available to each of our schools. So board members, if you'd like to pop in and visit each of our schools during these times, we want to give you the dates and times when you can do so. Second item on the uh, items of information for governance and operations related to the STAR program, which is our summer program. Dr. Roach uh, came up with an acronym and modified it a little bit. Uh, one thing that is different with a lot of our summer schools in the past is we would partner with some of our community partners, which we're continuing to do so in a different way. But one thing that has been encouraged, as you can imagine, through COVID is to uh, catch up as much learning loss as possible. One of those ways is for every one of our schools to offer a summer school program. So you'll notice the STAR program, which is GCSS Summer Tutoring Acceleration Remediation Program, gives you some objectives and qualifications that the schools are using the uh, screener data and grades at the high school to help direct the need at each of the schools. We will see within the next week kind of how those numbers are shaking out at each school. We will have uh, summer school throughout the month of June would be the day after Memorial Day, Monday through Thursday, excludes Friday, um, 8 a.m. to 11 for elementary and 9 to 12 for high school and middle school. Uh, that's in order to cycle the bus and back through just like we do uh, in a regular school day. So you see just some of the, uh, the notes there that go along with the program using CARES funds uh, to the tune of about 500000 a year is what this would cost to operate the summer school program for the next four summers. We anticipate using CARES funds to, uh, to implement this type of summer school with modifications each year based on the need. Dr. Williams, do we have any idea um, this ballpark, how many students might take advantage of something like this, or what if that's going to be determined? Uh, the deadline for us to know the numbers is April 30th. Uh, the schools do have guidelines of a 10 to 1, ranging up to 15 to 1 ratio as far as students to teacher. Uh, a lot of there's still a lot of things to be figured out. We will not be providing transfer buses between schools. That's going to that's going to uh, impact some numbers. Uh, we have to get creative. You know, uh, teachers for the last year have been put under stress that they've never been under before. So to then ask some teachers to say, "Can you come back in the month of June and help teach?" Four weeks is a long time. So some of our administrators and teachers are willing to say, "Hey, I can give you two weeks, or I can give you." You know these same two or three days a week, and so we're we're kind of leaving it up to schools. We give them parameters. They're not going back and trying to find the right the right uh, personnel to match the needs of the students for summer. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, this is tuition free for all uh, students, and would it also be tuition free for out of district students just for this? Maybe if they have been one of our students this previous year. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We are allowing that. Yes. The year's tuition to cover this as well. Yes, so if, any, if anyone who has been um, indicated in any summer school, regardless of their uh, tuition status, uh, we're going to serve them. And why is it, I, if I read this correctly, lunch is only at Fair Street and why is that? Part of the challenge there is the number of people who run the kitchen in the summer. We always struggle with finding personnel to, to run in the summer, so we are allowing by uh, using CARES funds, snacks, and other opportunities at each of the schools. Uh, in the past, we did two kitchens, but we've had a difficult time finding them to make them cover two kitchens. Uh, so we will not be able to provide, if you can imagine, almost a thousand meals uh, that would need to be transported out. Uh, so we, we 
have, we had to reduce it down to one, which still serves some of our partnership schools uh, for meals, but from a snack standpoint, from eight to 11, uh, we'll be able to provide a, a good snack for our kids um, before they go home. Uh, we're looking so much. Uh, do we still have compulsory summer school where you were strongly recommend to go versus, hey, this is an opportunity if you fell behind, get caught up? You would invite We work it as strong as possible. Okay. Uh, some things we've run into in the past when we do four weeks after three weeks, if they see that they've been devoted to the next grade, all of a sudden they don't come to mind. Uh, so we're using this simply as a, let's look at our screener, let's look at our information that we have. Your child is behind in this X number of days. They got a 42 in a class. Uh, as strongly as we can work that, we can. The, the challenge we run into, especially this year with COVID, some are still not going to come to school. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we'll move on to update on the new middle school. Yeah, a few items here. Uh, be glad to, to take any questions as we go throughout this. Uh, as Mr. Nemec brings up the drone view, this was just last week a view of the middle school uh, provided by Carol Day and constructed to us so that we could see the site. Top left, that's where Kevin Road is, you're headed north into town. So this view is basically from uh, above. Blue. You can see on the left side, that's actually part of the parking and the uh, parent pickup drop off area. You're seeing the front half of the main building. Uh, you can still see where a fair amount of plastic and, and grading is going on. Uh, so, we're really excited about that. And Mr. Niles comes up with a request a little bit later. If you got any specific questions about what's next or where we're going, we'll be glad to share those with you. You can tell that the school's coming along great. If you go out together, just continues to uh, impress me every time we go by just the size of that of that property and, and success we're having um, with making progress on building. Thank you. Same thing I want to bring your attention to uh, the recommendations from the committee. We had we our first meeting shows there back in October. We started this conversation really in August and September, asking our employees, asking the community that if they're interested in serving. On a committee, uh, both Dr. Brown, Ms. Bowright, uh, Ms. Freeman served on this committee as, as well as some of our staff members. We had more than 50 people join in at various times. Mr. Smith, Dr. Ramsey were part of our committee as well. And as we went through this, you can see the task that we completed as a group. When you're when you're looking at a, a new middle school, especially in a district where we only had one middle school for a number of years. We wanted to give it the time, effort, and energy that it needed to roll out a plan that really fit uh, what we're trying to accomplish. So you can see that in October we met just to kind of um, just kind of kick it off really uh, and look at some naming policies with the homework when we met the second time. We then had breakout rooms and really had to have that conversation about what does it look like from a from a middle school regarding enrollment. Do you still have Gainesville Middle School with 1,200 kids? And this new middle school was 600. Or do you try and strike the balance and be as close as you can between the two schools? How does that impact your attendance on? Uh, how does that impact your race and ethnicity and your demographic breakdown in each of your schools? So all of that had to be discussed and we'll look at those results in just a minute as far as what a future plan is going to entail. What are the middle school mascots not read out? What are the implications there? So board members, you can imagine in a committee setting like this, via Zoom, first of all, you never know who else is listening on the Zoom call as you're, as you're having these meetings. But the other part is you can imagine there's a lot of live discussion. We broke up the breakout rooms. Uh, one was kind of employees, one was parents. Um, and then just kind of try to split the group up as best we could. Uh, the other were, were teachers from other schools. And then when we got into November, we reviewed the attendance office and started to make recommendations. So I'm gonna share with you, these are not recommendations at this point, as much as an update of where we are, uh, the, the first part of the attendance zones, and you can just scroll down a little bit more. So, the attendance zone recommendation that we took, and we partnered with uh, Hall County GIS Mapping, and we took our current fourth through sixth grade students, 
You may be asking, well, why do we think the current four through six grade students is because that will be the first class of six through eighth grade students at the new middle school. So the six graders that are currently in Hansel Middle School will be the first eighth grade class at the new middle school. A month ago, we posted a job for a principal. We'll be conducting those interviews over the next month and hopefully we'll make a recommendation at the formal board meeting uh, in May. What that allows us to do is bring the principal on board a year in advance so that we can uh, get them integrated in with the Hansel Middle School, get to know the staff, get to know the students, get to know the families, the community, so that we can really have two middle schools where you're really not going to know the difference between the two. That was our goal from the beginning. Is let's create two schools where there's not a lot of differences between the two. So maybe you'll scroll just a little bit. Uh, on the attendance on recommendation, they chose the Morrow Connector, which we'll share with you in just a moment. But the Morrow Connector, if you look at the table, it leaves Gainesville Middle School with 856 students and it leaves the new middle school with 827 students. And about 88 students that are currently in fourth through sixth grade or non city That means they may be employees' children or other tuition uh, paid students, families. Create a little bit of balance, so 860 to 830. When you look at the uh, demographic breakdown uh, between our Asian, Black, Hispanic, multiracial, white uh, students, you can see the number of 856 compared to 827. There's not a lot of differences. You see on the left, the overall makeup of 11.8% are white, 4.8% are multiracial, 61.9% are Hispanic, 18.1% black, 3.2% Asian. That's the overall student body of the current fourth through sixth grade. When you then divide that uh, using the GIS map and you look at the Morrow connector of those percentages, you get a little bit of a fluctuation in almost all of the areas. Uh, you see that. Uh, cluster A, uh, which is Gainesville Middle School, is a little more white, a little more black, but you see that the new middle school is a little more Hispanic and a little more Asian. You're not going to have anything that's equally, that's equally distributed, but it's pretty close. Uh, as a group, we looked at how these percentages compared to our elementary schools and the wide range of our elementary schools versus the middle school. Uh, the, the group settled in that this was a uh, percentage that we just wanted to know what, what the makeup looked like. Of the school, and it was very positive uh, to the group as a whole. So, the recommendation is going to move forward into the slide now. We'll show you that tomorrow connection. And on this map, the different colors in the background represent the city. Uh, in the, on the right side, that orange color is the New Holland zone, the green is another, the red is Centennial, the purple uh, is GEA, and then your tan and your brown is Monday Millie. Your blue is Fair Street kind of coming down. A lot of it looks like a lot of land there in Fair Street, but the reality is that's uh, a lot of chicken woods area. So it's definitely uh, not, not as dense there. But, uh, <coughs> but as you look over all of the, the six different zones that we have, uh, you can see some of them looks a little different. We considered taking the four cluster A schools and comparing it to cluster B, but well, then that was created kind of a 1,100 students and 700 students. We wanted something that was a little more equally distributed. So the Morrow connector uh, would come down Dawsonville Highway, connect to John Morrow, which is why we call the Morrow connector, then over to Queen City. And so you see that red line kind of cutting from the northwest corner to the southeast corner. Uh, you also notice that when you look overall at the attendance zones, one thing that does look a little different is it does split part of Centennial and part of Fair Street. Uh, it allows uh, some extended stay hotels to, to fall in both areas. It allows for housing authority in both areas. It allows for multifamily in both. It allows for residential in both. It was very important to the committee uh, to try and be as safe as well when we draw that line. And many times when you look at attendance zones, it's very tough to say, well, this side of the road goes here, this side of the road goes there. But when you look at that connector, it's four lanes all the way through. Uh, so it gives buses a good opportunity to turn and to see. It gives families and parents a great opportunity uh, as well. When you look at the geographic location of the two middle schools, if you look at the top right, that northeastern side, you can see a school highlighted. That's Gainesville Middle School. On the you know the, the far side of the actual city limits, then if you look at the southwest side, 
uh, where the new middle school is being built. You look at that connector and it basically splits you, splits geographically the two middle schools where they are. So the, the group, as we went through all of this, uh, we settled on this as a proposal that we would bring forward as a future recommendation. If there's any, what, what we would plan to do is have some, uh, some parent sessions to roll some of this out. To hopefully in the fall, um, at the timeline is as yet to be determined. From a mascot standpoint, um, it, it was pretty simple. Uh, it was about 70% of our people said, let's go with the Red Elephants. Regardless of the name of the school, we are the Red Elephants. A lot of that conversation came back to we preach one game school, we say one game school. If we're still going to have one high school with the Red Elephants, why would both middle schools not work collaboratively? As, as one game. And so you see the unity and identity piece there. It's in the spirit of one game all students will graduate from Gainesville High School. And the committee believe in that continuity. Extracurricular consistency. The initial goal is to maintain consistent extracurricular teams and groups through one city-wide focus. What we did want to do is to create two middle schools where we're automatically competing with ourselves within the city when one school may have a team and another school may not. If in time we continue to grow, we need to split that out, the opportunities there. We learn lessons from Valdosta City, from Habersham County, and also Coldwell, who all use city-wide or county-wide teams to kind of build that unity across middle schools. When you think about right now, Ms. Freeman and the middle school have a tough task ahead of them. The last couple of years, you've got six elementary schools that now feed into one. How do you get involved in middle school as a sixth grader? There aren't that many opportunities compared to seventh and eighth and below. So you're now taking six different identities, merging them into one, and you have the opportunity at middle school to now have two, two schools that do things together in certain ways when they go to high school, the familiarity is there. And so the committee felt very strongly that the lessons learned from other districts, extracurricular consistency, and unity and identity uh, would, would be making a recommendation regarding the red elements. Which brings us to the final part. Now, anytime you go into a school name, we have the committee go back and look at the policy and how the policy fits into uh, moving forward into naming the school. I will tell you, we started off, I believe, with about 13 to 15 different names. It ranged anywhere from any, anything with the word Lanier in it, anything with the word Hill in it, because of where that school is located, the hillside, Hillview, Mountain This, Mountain That. We wanted to be as open as we could about it. And we took that list of about 15, narrowed it down to about six, narrowed it down to about four. Uh, and we had some great individuals, Mr. Smith, Ms. Wimpy, uh, Ms. Ray, and a number of others who just came together to say, hey, how can we promote this to our community? And so you see the four names that are there, Gainesville Southern or South Gainesville Middle School, Midland Middle School, and Queen City Middle School. The first two are more directional. Uh, within the city, the other two are more about what is Gainesville. I think sometimes when we look at uh, different locations and how that fits in, this is McKinley Road, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. And the first thing we kind of tossed out, to be honest, was McKinley Middle School. But it's tough to have a McKinley Middle School when a mile or so away you've got a McKinley Elementary that's in the county. And that's very confusing for families to say, well, I go to McKinley Elementary, but I'm not going to go to McKinley Middle. I'm in the county, then I'm in the city. So we kind of eliminated some of these, and we wanted to be able to take a list of names that's been reduced down before. There still may be a magic one out there, uh, but these represent the city, either from a somewhat geographical best, uh, location from a southern or southwestern type side of the city based on the map that you saw, uh, but then also looking at the, the Midland engine uh, that we'll look at in just a minute, but also the historical part of Point City. So board members, what I'd like to share with you today, none of these are recommendations to be voted on. But it is something that we are ready to take to the public. I want to share with you a little two-minute video that a number of people uh, put together that we would like to start sharing out with our students, with our staff, and start to receive votes on, well, what do you think about these four names and where do we go from here? So there's no need to play Both of them are beautiful. Love it. As you can see, Eve has a unique and strength that will 
So as you can see, the video that was put together, we know it was released a little bit earlier, but between the snow that we had from Valentine's Day and some other setbacks to cover, it took a little bit longer than we anticipated. But anytime you get a chance to put kids on camera, you get to hear that sweet voice uh, and, and uh, just get to see that personality come out. So later this evening, we'll have this uh, information go out to all of our employees. We will then begin sharing it out with students so that before school ends, we can hopefully get about 10,000 or so votes between our students uh, and our employees, but also in our community. There's also a link that you'll see that if you want to look at that video or view that video, you can look at the YouTube page that is there. Otherwise, you can just scroll down and just make your selection. We do have a comments box there. Uh, just to just receive some feedback from the community. Our goal is to be a minimum of 10,000. If we get more than that, and that means people from the community voting, we do have it set up where you can't sit there on your phone and just continue to vote, 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 vote. Uh, one voting per device, I think Dr. Brown admitted to the group last week, she tried to vote on the same device twice, it didn't work. It scared me a little bit today because I was checking all the links to, uh, to see if they were working before the board meeting that was this morning. And the link wasn't working because we could have already voted. And so I had to go to Lizette's office and, and make sure that the link was working from her side. So the link does work. It's up there. If you try to go more than once, you've got to do some things with the history to clean it out in order to do that again. But we don't encourage that. Uh, however, you've got a phone and a computer, there's nothing wrong with two votes. Uh, we hope, uh, board members, that by the um, May board meeting, uh, which I believe is the 17th, we will, we will bring more information to you uh, about these options that are there. So just want to bring that to you and share that with you uh, this evening. Long report for an item of information, but also a lot of work has gone into it. Those of you that serve on the committee, thank you to our principals and, and our teachers who serve on the committee, but also help develop this uh, video. Thank you as well. I'll take any questions that you have. Uh, let me just add thank you too to the uh, committee. Ms. Wendy did a, a really fine job directing this, and Ms. Hobson. Our own Ms. Hobson right here rescued this project from uh, uh, <clears throat> bringing it to this level and adding this level of professionality uh, to it and uh, getting it ready for the rollout for the uh, students, and parents, and community. So thank you, Jill. Great job. Watch those things back a little bit. Publicity, so we'll be glad to get a lot of conversations going on over these next few weeks. All right, any other questions or comments? Uh, next two items on the agenda uh, Mrs. Donna Allen is going to present the first reading of two policies. Now, good evening. I will be um, presenting uh, two action items um, to first readings. The first reading of a new policy is GBIA teacher evaluation appeals. 
And this is a new policy that focuses on 2020 legislation requiring a local board policy under which certified teachers can appeal their annual evaluations and ratings. I have one question and uh, tell me why your the reference is made specifically to teacher rather than certified personnel like we have in, in other policies. Thank you. Um, so the other certified uh, staff is covered under our GAD complaints and grievances and GAD 3 um, complaints and grievances for non-certified employees. This new policy is specifically related to the teacher key evaluation program uh, evaluation system for certified teachers in their annual summative evaluation. At the top of it right now, of course, uh, we have to have that done, I believe, uh, this call about uh, mid-May. So we're, we're dealing, you know, with the next month or so. COVID sped this up a little bit. This did come out of the uh, legislature, and so we're following through uh, based on the guidance there. And the policy is to become effective July 1st, 2021. Any other questions on policy GDI? All right, this is that. All right, and so our next policy is first reading of policy JDC school admissions. And if I could draw your attention to Roman numeral 10 under definitions, number three, um, line item E. We are removing that from our policy because it is no longer part of the federal law. Any other questions? Comments? So board members, these will sit for 30 days and we'll put them out for any kind of input and pending uh, any kind of input, we will bring it back as a recommendation. All right, thank you, Mrs. Allen. All right, the next item on the agenda are the action items, Dr. Williams, uh, item number one. So Gainesville City and Hall County for the last year, you, you may or may not know this, the number four county in Georgia when it comes to cases per 100,000 measure. And in that time, we as a school system missed three weeks at the beginning of school where we started virtually, and then we missed a week and a half when we started virtually coming back in January. It's just a true testament to the sacrifices not only that our employees made, but also that all of our families made, saying we need our kids in school, we want to do whatever it takes to get them in school. When Governor Kemp announced back in January that they would be given a bonus, uh, it was their terminology of $1,000 for every uh, employee. A couple of things came very clear. The next day was well, maybe that evening, but well, when are we going to get to that? And then that turned into a little bit of a waiting game. That was finally approved by the State Board of Education in March. Board, I'd like to recommend to you and to be you have shared with me that our employees have just done a fantastic job uh, over this last year plus uh, in, in getting our kids ready, filling those learning gaps, making sure that we got every meal fed, making sure that our kids have the social emotional supports that they need at school and at home, whether it's in virtual, whether it's face to face, and just making sure we care about our kids. And I, I cannot say anything that would not, um, just very proud, proud of our team, proud of the one game for mantra and the way we inspired every child and prepare. We really saw everybody step up uh, to whatever was needed. And everybody's exhausted. But I think uh, one thing that you see here that as a district, we would like to take the thousand dollars that is coming through the state CARES funds, but then also take about 600,000 from our CARES two funds here at the district level to make it a $1,500 uh, retention payment to our employees. So it would impact all of our current employees that are, that are paid, but also anyone that retired this school year. We had uh, some teachers retire mid year or nurses and so forth. And we just want to make sure that the people who really just dug in and either have been a part of that work for the last year or recently are being a part of it, we just really want to be able to show our appreciation uh, to them. And I recommend the $1,500 uh, one time uh, retention payment that will be processed this week to all of our members. Other questions, comments? 
All those in favor? Abstain. Okay. The record shows that Mr. Smith did not vote. Motion carries. I will have intimate knowledge that this news is well received. <laughs> you know, sometimes you send out emails and you don't really know if might read them. But on Friday, when I sent out the emails, this was on the agenda. People read it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what it said. Oh, yeah. um, but thank you. Item number two, Dr. Williams. Yes, when, when you saw the uh, drone view of the middle school, there's a piece of property that's kind of on the corner. That over the last couple of months, we realized that we really need to pursue as far as purchasing. And this evening, I'm recommending a uh, gratifying purchase of property to authorize the closing and authorize the commission of the Jackson property the middle school site uh, to the tune of 295000 with that combined with the commission comes out to 303800 Motion to approve. The motion by Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Mitchell. Any, any questions? All those in favor? Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Niles, if you would like to come up and talk to us about the new middle school GMP amendment. Yes, sir. As we shared, as we started the new middle school pro uh, project, we realized that there was uh, rock up there on the site. Uh, we put some money into our uh, contingency and some money into our site allowance, uh, $1,523,877 into our contingency, then rent $79,217 into site allowance that would cover all of the initial blasts. Well, as we continue, uh, of course, we learned that there's, of course, more rock than we, than we had estimated. We had estimated uh, perhaps about 15 blasts. I think we completed our blast where at about 30, 30 different blasts, which leaves us a balance of 1,723,276,90 that is due to date. This request to amend our GMP is to pay that balance due plus add 750,000 back to contingency for the building itself. Um, City Gainesville asked us also doing uh, site inspections for phase one environment to increase the soil mill wall by two feet. Uh, again, that was unforeseen, so there's uh, 179,313 for that. And then also to go ahead in the project and include uh, stadium lighting there, our fields and field house, and the amount of $225,000. Uh, so the request of amendment is for two million eight hundred seventy-seven five eighty-nine. It increases our GMP. GMP initially was thirty-five million nine thirty-two nine twelve. Uh, the request of two million eight seventy-seven five eighty-nine brings it to thirty-eight million eight ten five zero one nine. The biggest thing about this project in general, we knew we were going to get a good bit of rock. We were trying to find 20 plus acres in the city. We knew it presented some challenges. What we didn't know was um, we said we got 32 different blasts. Uh, we are finished with blasting from what I understand. So that is, that is the positive part. So there should not be major adjustments to the amount. Motion to approve. Got a motion by Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Mitchell. All those any questions? Well, one, one question I have is so the additional money here, this is just coming from the same East Plus, right? The same. Yeah, so when you think about the bond, the money we bonded, it's coming from that pot. So this does not impact any payments that those people just did. That's already part of the, the amount that was approved. All those in favor? Question carried. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Okay. Uh, you had asked the question what would be the next steps uh, that were approved tonight. Uh, as you saw on the drone, drone video, you see some footage that are already going in. That was the areas that we knew we had actually met the level so we could start footings. But then this will allow us also to continue completing footings, allow us to go ahead and start a rough farming. And then it also will allow us to 
do some uh, much needed stone drain uh, install on some of the property that we just purchased. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Pepper, to present our March financials.
that's really the December spending that has been collected in January. So it's been 100 and almost 30,000 uh, above where we were the previous year. Uh, and these are uh Kenny, these are response time uh receipts. Uh how much longer does response time for all November of twenty six. We've already approved spot six. But these these are for response time. Okay. Any other questions or comments of uh Mr. Stuff? A uh, motion to accept the financial report as presented in the summer. That is motion by Mr. Smith. Second, Second by Dr. Randy. All those in favor? Motion carries making this special. Any discussion on it? I have one item to share. The uh, U.S. Congress will soon try to put together what they're going to call an infrastructure. Uh, couch in the same context as uh, the Two Cares Act from 2021, but infrastructure for which uh, local governments will have an opportunity to participate uh, in the form of applying for certain grants. So, uh, heads up to the Dr. Williams and the staff, please, to begin thinking about needed infrastructure, whether it's traditional roads, sewer, uh, sidewalks, et cetera, or even beyond because we don't know which scope that the U.S. Congress is going to take just yet, but certainly it will start with traditional projects for which we can qualify for federal assistance. But it would be nice to, I think, to go ahead and have our start our list of projects that would be needed as we move forward. Did you say it's not one on that? There is not one. Uh, federal fiscal year starts uh, October 1. Yes. Okay. That's probably a target. Day. Um, but I, it, it may come, the opportunity may come soon. Thank you. All right, any other discussion? I have a motion to adjourn into executive session. Summer. A motion by Mr. Smith, second by Dr. Andy. All of the Six thirty eight.